This video is brought to you by my awesome Patreon supporters. To help support my work, keep my videos ad-free, and get rewards, follow the link in the description below. You can then select a tier depending on your budget, and every little bit helps. Thank you! What is up everybody, Incente here, and today I have a really cool analysis on the empty triangle. So when you first start on a go and you're sort of learning more about the game, you learn that the empty triangle is generally considered to be a bad shape. Uh, when you think about bad or inefficient shapes, the empty triangle is usually one of the first things that comes to mind, and the reason is because a lot of times it can be a bad shape. However, like almost every rule and go, eventually at some point you hit an exception and sometimes multiple exceptions. And there's actually many examples where an empty triangle can be considered a good move. So in this video, we're gonna show you what makes the empty triangle bad, what situations make it good, uh, and how you can apply those in your own games. So let's do it. All right, so the empty triangle, what about this is a bad shape? Well, as we all know, Go is a game about efficiency and murdering your opponent, but also efficiency. And to make a shape efficient, you would like to accomplish the goal of the shape, namely eye space, uh, in as few moves as possible. And this is where we see the empty triangle sort of suffer, because with the empty triangle, the diagonal is a move that is always connected, right? If white tries to disconnect, black plays here, and now it is a connected shape. So black has invested two stones to move across the board, but the shape that it makes is always connected, so black is doing this connection in essentially only two stones. Now, if you add an empty triangle, what has changed about the shape? Well, not a ton. It, it's still connected. It's still covering roughly the same distance across the board, but the difference is now black has invested one, two, three stones in a shape that has not given black's group much extra strength. The eye shape is still not really existing right now, um, and it's not really reaching much further than the diagonal could. And so on a very fundamental level, that is sort of why the empty triangle is considered inefficient, because it's basically doing what the diagonal is doing. However, if you can make the empty triangle, if you can make this extra stone work for you, if the presence of that extra stone can help create eye shape or help cut through and attack an opponent's group to give you sente, there are situations where you can play this and it's actually a very good move. So let's explore that right now. So let's take this situation. Here, black is very clearly under attack by white's group. White has just played this move to come out over top of black stones and really pressure this group into doing whatever white wants it to do for basically the rest of the game. Now there is a proper and an improper way to escape from this situation. And I'm going to show you both ways. Now the improper way is using sort of the intuitive uh, way to do things, which would be to shoulder hit here, white's going to defend, black's going to come up. This feels very intuitive. This seems like something that most people, that'd be their first idea that they think. However, when white plays this move, that's threatening to cut right at this marked point, which means black needs to play here. And what do we see? We see an empty triangle. And this is an example of a very bad empty triangle. This is not the place you want to be. Black does not have sente, black does not have eye shape, and white can make eye shape for their group and continue pushing and attacking and pressuring these black stones. These black stones have no eye shape. They're going to have to keep running away. Meanwhile, white is making strength here and here, and it's just not a great situation to be in. This is when the empty triangle is very, very bad. <clears throat> However, in this same situation, there's a way to make the empty triangle that is good. And that is with a not intuitive move, but very strong move, this diagonal attachment. It's a very, very cool move. Um, and it's doing a lot of things. It's threatening to come out at A. If white doesn't respond, it's threatening to hurt white stone by playing at B. So it really does warrant a response from white. 
And if white does respond in this way, now black plays the empty triangle and it's actually a very strong move. And the reason is it's doing two things at once. It's threatening to come out, but it's also threatening to make an eye here at B. The fact that it's threatening to make an eye means white can't really take advantage of the inefficiency here. And white has to figure out what white wants to do. If white does tanuki, black can come out over here, and this would be an amazing result for black because white's entire potential in the side of the board would be completely diminished, and black has a very strong cut here to make his blue completely safe. Because no matter which way black decides to defend, white decides to defend, black can take the other stone. So white does need, need a response and white can use, or black can use the time that white needs to do in this response to essentially get out. And then at any point if black feels pressured, black can make an eye relatively easily. So the fact that black can have a better eye, white doesn't have as many forcing moves and black has a few cuts of his own makes us a much better way to escape from that situation than in the previous one. And this is an example of a good empty triangle. Now, the next example I wanna show you is a very cool example that you can absolutely use in your own games because it's using shapes that are very common and very accessible to intermediate players. So you've got this connection here, which is a three space extension by white and black can actually attach inside here. And this is a very, very cool Tsuji sequence in utilizing the empty triangle. So the intuitive move for white, obviously, is to play here. Now black's gonna keep thrishing and threaten to cut at A and B simultaneously. So if white defends this one, now black makes the empty triangle. And this is an extremely cool move because it connects to either this group or this group, no matter what. If white takes one, black is gonna, it, White takes one, black is going to take the other, and these two points are mei. Now, that's great, and a bonus is because of this empty triangle move here, it's also threatening to cut through white shape at A. If white does not answer this move, black can completely decimate and take a huge corner for himself, keep attacking this group, and it's going to be a disaster for white. Black could even let it go and assault this group now. So that cut is absolutely brutal and that's something white needs to defend. And white's defended and now black has achieved this invasion which is guaranteed to connect in Sentang. So it's free to move somewhere else. And that's an example of a good fighting empty triangle. Here's another extremely cool example from the Blood Vomiting game. It's a very famous Go game. You should take a look if you haven't seen it already. It's extremely cool. Uh, played a very, very long time ago, and according to legend, um, it caused one of the players to actually cough up blood because they were sick at the time, and the stress of the moves uh, was actually too much for this player. It's, it's a really cool story, cool legend, and um, definitely should look it up if you get the chance. However, a sequence in this Blood Vomiting game uses the empty triangle. So I'm going to show you this right now, and I want to direct your attention to the right side of the board. So white is going to try to bring their group out here, and black is sensibly going to try to escape. White's going to make some shape and a connection out of black's center of influence, also with decent shape. And black is going to execute that same formation that I had showed you before, where you have a one space jump and then you one space jump over on top of an enemy stone on the third line. Now here's where it gets really cool. White plays this bump here, and this bump is doing a very interesting thing where it's threatening to Hane at the edge here. So Black decided, I'm not gonna let that happen. I want to try to push in this direction so we can take more control of the center of the board. Now white executes this very cool empty triangle. And this empty triangle is really brutal because it's threatening a cut in two different places, A and B. So this is another example of an amazing fighting empty triangle. If black defends one, 
that is a huge concession to give up uh, for white's group. And if black decides to do the other one, the cut still exists, white is still connected, and black is going to be in for a very difficult fight um, to try to get this group to live. So this is another amazing example. And now you might ask, well, why didn't white just play this from the get-go? Why did white bump first? The reason is because black, it's generally a bad move to try to play this elephant eye in this formation um, because black can defend at whichever side black wants. So if black plays here, white tries to push through, white goes here. Now if white cuts, black has this incredibly strong move attachment here, which guarantees safety for the black group. It's an advanced technique. But if white tries to sort of take this group, black can attach underneath. And now there's no way that white can actually disconnect these two things. Because if white tries, this is an Atari, this is an Atari, and black can just settle here. And now black's group is alive, black can connect under, and if white isn't careful, black can cut this group off and attack it. So this whole sequence makes playing this move in general pretty subpar. Now, this bump does a few things. It basically makes, so it's basically forcing black to choose, like black, which one do you want? Do you want me to double Hane you here? and essentially ruin all of your center potential in this area because you need to keep your group safe, right? Or do you want to keep your group in the direction of profit for you, but now I have this incredible empty triangle which is gonna give you a very difficult cutting point. And so that's another example of an extremely good empty triangle. Now, the last example I wanna show you is for the end game. Empty triangles can actually be very useful for the end game because they can stop uh, opponents um, from getting a large amount of forcing moves. So now let's take this example. If white chooses to descend, which is a pretty good end game move for white, it's a mistake for black to play this move because if black does make this move, this gives a shortage of liberties on black's empty triangle, right? White can actually threaten to capture these stones here. Black is gonna defend. White threatens to capture all three black stones. If black defends, white goes here, here, and here. And that was a very good end game exchange for white. White was able to push black two lines behind where he was supposed to be. Now, if we compare this to the other empty triangle, this is the correct empty triangle to use for your local end game because now white can't really do this attachment because black's just gonna capture. So white essentially just has to play this move. And now black is one full line over and saves at least five, uh, four points uh, in black's corner. So I hope this gave you some really cool examples on different end game techniques, different mid game techniques, and different opening game techniques and how to use the empty triangle. Remember, And uh, I will catch you guys later. See you on the grid.